This is your Barbados Today Morning News for Monday, February 7. An unborn child will never get the chance to know his or her father because of the callous actions of a gunman who on Saturday night carried out the first killing of the year. On Sunday morning, residents of Skeets Road, the Ivy, were still shaken from the loud and rapid sound of heavy artillery as they washed the blood of Shaquan Stanford from the street. Our Kareem Smith has the details. A Saturday night shooting here at Skeets Road, the Ivy St. Michael, gave Barbados its first murder for 2022. Shaquan Stafford was confronted by a lone gunman and hit several times. Today, friends are removing blood stains from the side of the road as they try to erase the memory of the night before. I was at a party and I get a phone call. So I leave the party and I went to the hospital. When I got there, I saw his mum. So his mum told me that he ain't doing good. You know, and I just stand there, for, I stand there right through. Until they view his body. Yeah. Well, I was standing up and I hear a set of shots for you. And it was like a pause, like shot stop, and then a couple more beat. And I just, like, because I was facing that, so I was looking across the gap, and I just saw someone running and fall down. But then when I went out there, I realized that is um, Shaquan. Well, young baby coming, my man, that's a nice man, the man down. Thing, man, just be on the streets that like, where we come out here and listen to some music, enjoy yourself, and go back home. It was a nice man, Sabi. Barbadians are paying less for some petroleum products this week. Effective midnight on Sunday, diesel will cost three dollars and twenty-nine cents a liter, a decrease of five cents. The price of kerosene will increase by fifteen cents and will now cost one dollar and fifty-eight cents. The price of gasoline remains unchanged at $3.99. The adjusted price of LPG 100 pounds cylinder will be $153.71. The 25 pound cylinder will retain at $43.53. The 22 pound cylinder $38.47. And the 20 pound cylinder at $34.97. There's concern that Barbados, like the rest of the region, will suffer serious consequences in light of the absence of students from physical classrooms for almost two years as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's the view of noted regional economist Marla Dirkman, who joined scores of parents and guardians and students who protested outside government's headquarters at the weekend, calling for the resumption of face-to-face -face learning. The children who are suffering the most as a result of the school closures are those who are affected by the digital divide, meaning they don't have internet at home or they don't have devices. And there are many, many children who are suffering from this digital divide. And they're the ones that will fall behind the most. Um, but we want to do this for all children because all children deserve an education. This country, post-independence, sorry, was, was founded on education and health care for all. Okay? And... Um, it's unfortunate that it seems as though education has not been given the kind of priority now as other things such as cricket and election campaign parties. So we feel like this is not fair. Um, education should be one of the most important things as a developing nation. However, new Education Minister Kay McConney announced late Friday that officials are working toward February 21 as the date for the return of students to face-to-face -to -face teaching. To date, the Ministry of Education has had five meetings with our partners over a five-month period. In fact, just earlier today, we extended an invitation to these said partners to continue our engagement during the next week. Our intention in the best interests of our children is the finalization of the roadmap with a view to both public and private schools resuming face-to-face -face classes on February 21st. A press briefing will be held after our consultations. In other news this Monday, authorities are concerned about growing social dysfunction in society and they're embarking on several missions aimed at facilitating more social and emotional learning. Education Minister Kay McConney said government has set the wheels in motion to help develop the emotional intelligence of citizens across the island. There is overwhelming research 
that shows the linkages among social and emotional learning, student outcomes, and school performance. It is therefore high time that schools embrace social and emotional learning in their classrooms for all students, as well as more systematic approach to the teaching of the same. The time has come when social and emotional learning must become an integral part of our education package in an effort to ensure that students cultivate the essential skills they need to be successful in schoolwork and life in general. The Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory reported 462 new COVID-19 cases, comprising of 227 males and 235 females. 86 of those infected were under the age of 18 and 376 were 18 years and older. The total number of tests conducted was 2,102. There are currently 162 persons in isolation and 11,880 in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional happenings in the Bahamas, Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis has assured that his administration is not anti press. Last Tuesday, reporters were prevented from conducting interviews with cabinet ministers outside the office of the Prime Minister ahead of the weekly cabinet meeting. Brave said that his administration is merely trying to bring some structure to the exchanges between cabinet ministers and the media. We get the details from Eyewitness News. Prime Minister Philip Davis today defending his administration's openness to be questioned by local media. In fact, he's curious as to why there has been so much public discourse about the matter. We are not anti-press. We welcome the press. And one of the things I initiated and implemented was a weekly press briefing. That was just the start of his seven-minute explanation as to why media should take a step back and assess his administration's willingness to cooperate with media prodding. But he doesn't think that pulling ministers on the sidelines of cabinet meetings is the appropriate time and place for interviews. It's very difficult to be, you know, to be focusing on going to a meeting, uh, 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 of a cabinet meeting where weighty matters are being discussed, to be interrupted on the way to, to answer questions that you don't sometimes you don't even know the answer to. Since taking office, the Prime Minister established weekly press briefings on Thursdays. And we're just trying to bring some structure so that whenever you speak to us, it'll be an informed discussion. Which On the international front, thousands of people demonstrated in Canadian cities, including Toronto, against vaccine mandates. We get more in this report from Reuters TV. Canadian cities faced disruptions on Saturday as protest against vaccine mandates spread from the capital of Ottawa to Quebec City to Toronto. The so-called Freedom Convoy began as a movement against a vaccine requirement for cross-border truckers, but has turned into a protest against public health measures and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government. Demonstrators have shut down downtown Ottawa for the past eight days with some participants waving Confederate or Nazi flags and some saying they wanted to dissolve Canada's governments. While there are many peaceful protesters, some residents have complained of near incessant honking, smashed windows and being harassed for wearing masks. Counter-protesters in Ottawa came out to express their annoyance Saturday with signs reading, Go Home Please and Occupiers Go Home. 
Ottawa police on Friday warned of a crackdown on what they called an increasingly dangerous protest and dedicated 150 officers to patrolling and addressing unlawful and threatening conduct in the most impacted neighborhoods. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.